coming back folks this is for my clay sculpture students I'm trying to think of a good spring fun project for you to do uh, and today here in Virginia Beach it's pouring down rain again um, so uh, hopefully these April showers will bring some May flowers um, thinking about that um, I was thinking about what kind of sculpture we can do um, that would uh, work well in the garden and thinking of how uh, spring is a time of renewal and um, thinking in nature about seeds and seed pods and um, growth forms, things like that. Um, I thought I would bring to you a clay sculpture project that is like making seed pods. Um, and they're actually quite simple to do. And I wanna show you how to get started with that. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is show you how to make a hollow form really easy with your clay. I've got some of my clay here. And I'm gonna take a piece that's about, well, when I pound it down into a ball, and I'm gonna make it into a nice round ball to start. Um, it'll be about the size of a tennis ball, maybe slightly smaller. And it's important to actually make it into a nice round ball. Now, hopefully you have enough clay to work with to do some of these things. And that's about the tennis ball size ball of clay. And um, I can make another one part of my demonstration today. Get down to a nice round ball. So what I'm going to try to make is a pinch pot that is kind of rounded like this. It looks like a bowl almost. Um, we're going to make two bowls, put them together and make a pod. So I'm going to show you how to make the bowls first. Take your ball of clay, you have to open it up. And we do that by inserting your thumb down into it. And we make what we call a pinch pot where we actually pinch between our thumb and finger and hollow out the ball of clay. We don't want to leave it solid. We want to make it more like a bowl. So we got to take this and make it into one of these. So we do that by putting our thumb in till we can kind of just about feel it at the end. Maybe there's about that much space between the tip of my thumb and the top of the clay here. And I start to pinch with two fingers on the outside and I rotate and I pinch again and rotate, and pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate. So you start at this bottom and you're pinching and rotating the clay kind of rhythmically. It's like a clock ticks. It goes tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. It's pinch and turn, and pinch and turn, and pinch and turn. And then very easy to hollow out and make a bowl shape. And they go very quickly. This is a very old, simple forming method for clay. It's been around for thousands of years, literally. Probably ever since some person found clay on the side of a river bank and decided to mold it into something they could use. There, the first bowl was made. You make another, so we have two bowls. A pinch and turn, pinch and turn. I'm gonna do it a little faster. I've done about five hundred thousand of these in my twenty-five years of teaching. And is that an exaggeration? It definitely is. 500 million thousand pinch pots I've taught. <laughs> and it's fun, it's still fun. It does get tiring on your thumb though, especially as you get older and you get arthritis. It's like, wow, I didn't realize it hurt so much. So don't get old and don't get arthritis. That was a joke. Now I'm gonna, I kinda like the shape of this one. It has a kind of pointed shape or this one's kind of round. It's up to you how you decide to shape yours. I'm gonna to try to 
get these to match a little bit. You want them to match, uh, well, you might want them to match in shape, but you want the two lips to be about the same size, and I really hit it pretty good at that time. Sometimes it's hard to get them the same size, and it's easier to go out than it is to come back in. So if it's a little too small, make one a little bit bigger until it fits the other one. Um, but I'm gonna set these aside right now because I don't need them. Um, I made these a little bit earlier today to be my uh, demonstration pieces for you and to show you. Um, and what I did is I let them stiffen up. It's hard to do all this in one stage. What you wanna do is make your pieces and then let them stiffen up a little while. Now, if it's a nice sunny day, you could go out and put them in the sun for a little while. 15, 20 minutes in the sun, they probably stiffen up considerably. Um, it was a nice dry sunny day. Today is raining, so it's not gonna dry out there. So I used a heat gun. Um, it's like a hair dryer, but it gets a bit hotter. And a hair dryer will work. They're just very loud. Um, heat guns usually aren't that loud, and they put out a lot of heat, so they work a little bit better than a hair dryer in our case. But if you don't have one, a hair dryer will work. You can dry things up, um, get the stiffen, or else you can just let air do its thing and let it stiffen but you want to keep an eye on it so it doesn't dry out all the way. Because if it dries out all the way, then you're kind of in trouble. You're going to have to start over again. And I made these two sides, uh, two sides of the piece. I'm going to make one total piece, and I'm going to make like a seed pod. Um, and close it on up. Now, if one was bigger than the other, and one fit inside, I could see that being kind of like an acorn. An acorn is kind of like a seed pod, you know? That's a seed for an oak tree. So think about these things. You know, if you look on um, online and do a Google of uh, seed pod, um, you'll see all kinds of neat images. Everything from like things that look like green beans um, to uh, little flowers, seed clusters, and things like that. So we're gonna try to play around with our imagination. You don't have to exactly do what I've seen before or what you see. Although you could, if you're into that, that'd be fine. But we're gonna use our imagination a little bit. Um, so what I want to do is put these two halves together. I'm going to glue them together and then I want to carve and texture the surface because uh, I want to make the surface interesting a little bit more than what I have just by pinching out two uh, bowls. So to put them together, these are stiff. Remember, I let them stiffen up. If you try to do this right after you pinch them, you're going to have a lot of trouble. But if you let them stiffen up, they'll retain their shape while you work with them. Um, the thing is, they're soft enough, pliable enough, where if I do have to adjust them a little bit, I can. And what I'm doing there is called scoring, scoring that edge up, making it rough, and then I'm going to score this edge up, we're going to glue them together with some slip. So here we go. We're going to score this guy up, stick him to that guy. You can only do this when the clay is um, damp. It has to be wet, like leather hard is perfect. And that's a term we use in ceramics, in ceramic sculpture. It's when the clay has stiffened, but it has not dried out completely. So I like to use a fork. I, I'm gonna use a lot of just around the house tools today to um, kind of uh, encourage you to try some different things if you don't have pottery tools. You don't have to have pottery tools. You can use a fork. It's a good scoring tool. So I scored up these two sides. Now we want to slip them up. And I have some slip here inside my little Chinese food tub that I had prepared previously. And I have a lid for it so it stays wet. So, and I got a little paint brush so I don't have to use my finger. And I'm gonna paint this guy up here and slip them up real good if you don't do that if you don't use the slip as a glue it's not going to stick together too well you will paint into those score marks really well good slip is about the consistency of heavy cream to yogurt if you think in food terms if it's much thicker than yogurt it's really hard to work with and you can apply your slip liberally. That means with a lot. It's not a political statement. All right. So apply my slip a lot. 
so that this sticks together good. So in this case, a lot is good. We're gonna have some fun with this. You can tell I'm trying to have some fun today. It's kind of a boring day, I'm cooped up in the house. I like to be outside in the sunshine. I wanted to do this out in my garage studio with you. And today I'm in my kitchen again, here at Virginia Beach. So I've got these scored up. I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna put some granules in here to make some sound. So I'm gonna share this little trick with you. I'm gonna take my knife, I've got a fettling knife over here. You could use just a kitchen knife if that's all you got. Um, and I rolled out a couple coils, see these little coils here, and I've let them start to dry so they stiff. They're, they stiffen, <laughs> so they are stiff. And I'm gonna cut them into little chunks. Yeah. And I got some pre-made over here that I made. I wanted to show you how I made them. I'm gonna throw them inside, one half. All right. And what's gonna happen is after I finish this piece, those guys, they're gonna roll and rock around and shake around, they're gonna rattle. They're gonna make sound inside of this seed pod. And that is kind of interesting to people. When you pick it up and it makes a sound, you're like, what's in there? I wonder what's in there. So don't tell anybody what's in there, you know. Don't tell anybody. And if you're trying to sell these at some art fair somewhere, festival or whatever, and your customers come and pick it up, they're like, oh wow, that's really cool, I gotta have one. So, it's kind of an attractant. It's like a fishing lure for people. So here I got a scraper. I'm gonna try that to try to smooth down my seam. I'm gonna try to hide the seam completely so you don't know it's there. And if, if it's real obvious, you can add clay, you can add pinches of clay, or you can um, add a coil to the area where it would need to go in order to hide it. And uh, I'm gonna squeeze this off over here. I didn't uh, bring my towel with me today, but I do have a sponge. So let me see if that, that's gonna help. Improvise. Towels outside the garage workshop. That's where I usually do my work, is out the garage. I've got a studio set up out there. It's nice when there's good weather, but when it's cold, rainy, kind of dark for me. I like to have the door open, hear the birds and stuff. Let's see what's going on. So I'm gonna use my clay knife now. You can use about any kind of knife. I'm gonna smooth over that seam. And you can see that my clay is not so hard and dry that it's not uh, moving. I am able to smooth that and hide that seam. And then I'm gonna carve the surface in a minute. I'm gonna let this rest while I start a second piece for you. So you're getting double, you're getting a double demo today in the studio. I prepared a lot of this stuff ahead of time for you. So that you get lots of ideas and try some different things out. Be creative. But, uh, but do pay attention. Sometimes I find uh, some of the assignments I've been getting, people aren't always paying attention to the idea of the details, you know. You want to look at the details. So now I got like, it's almost like an egg shape right now. But we can work with that. And we're gonna carve through that seam. Everything's gonna come out really good. So just making sure it's stuck together really good. And I'm about satisfied that. I'm gonna let it rest here for a few minutes while I try to put on this one. 
Now I thought this one might be a little bit different. So this one could be something that kind of lays inside the garden. Um, and you just see it looks like a rock that's sitting there, but we're going to make some textures in the surface in a minute. Uh, I just needed to rest while that seam kind of uh, absorbs the moisture and is not too soft. Um, with this one, I was going to take this other piece and attach it, um, but I thought this would be one you could kind of stand up in the garden from the bottom, or maybe I left a little hollow in here. It doesn't go all the way through, but you could put a stick in that if you wanted to prop it up some. Um, thought that could work. Um, you could glue some kind of stick in there and it could be propped up off the soil surface. That could be kind of cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in my little seeds, <laughs> lack of a better term, that are going to shake and rattle and roll in there. Let's make some more of those real quick. Like I said, I'm just using a kind of stiff, dried coil. Break up the little pieces. So they rattle around in there after this thing is sealed up. I'm going to score the lip. Slip it up real good. You know what? Let's slip it up this way really fast. How about that? Just dip it in, dip it in there. Hey, that works pretty good. Invention, huh? All right. So I could put this on there like that, but that just looks kind of common. What if I invert it like that and it has a little dished out concave? I like that better. So I'm gonna score around this outside edge a little bit. Give it a little rough texture. And just a little bit. I don't have to go crazy. Get some of the granules off of there. Paint a little slip around. Yeah, I'm not going to go crazy on this. I'm working fast because I don't want to slow you down too much, you know. If I do 40 minute videos, nobody's gonna watch it to the end. I'll probably put you all to sleep, which I hope you get a good nap then. You know, that's cool with me, I don't care. Uh, I want you to be well rested when you go ahead and start this. When I was in, uh, in college, I used to love to take a nap at about 3.30 every day. It was good. It was good, refreshing. And then I was able to stay up later and work in the studio. It was kind of fun. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to push this top down to the point where I think it's good depth and in contact. And then I'm going to clean up some of this excess slip. And I should have brought my towel with me, but uh, it's okay. This one, I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing with that guy. Let it kind of buddy up so that the moisture content starts to equalize between the, uh, the top, the bottom, and the wet slip in the seam. Eventually, it will equalize. I want that to happen. So, I'm going to let it set here for a little while. Ooh, it's got a little rattle. I like that. See, you turned it upside down. It's wakes you up. It's like, what's in there? All right, so let's see what I got here with this eggy guy. There's different ways you could work this now that you've got a pillow of air in there. There's different ways to kind of work it if you're not too aggressive with your pressure. I'm going to roll it a little bit. Still a little soft seam but for demonstration purposes we're going to go for it and you know I wanted to show you some different ways we might go about carving it and what, what I would um, often recommend to students is that maybe you use something like 
your loop tool, if you have a loop trimmer tool. Now, I, I know some of you didn't invest in tools at this uh, beginning of this class and we're using what was just around the classroom and might not have grabbed anything from the classroom, the studio at the university when um, you left before this COVID-19 outbreak and you went home and you didn't have any tools. So I've got some other tools here that you might have around the home, but I'll show you what you could do with this. So, you know, sometimes what people will do with this, they'll just make little nicks like that. And you could use a, a loop trimmer to kind of go around. And I really wish the clay was a little stiffer than this. I thought the heat gun might have stiffened it and it didn't quite do it enough. Because it shouldn't be sticking to the trim tool. It felt like it was drier. That might have been just on the surface. But we'll work our way through it. So what should I do? I should probably wait for it to stiffen up a little bit more instead of keep going like I am doing. But I got a video to make and get out to you guys. And instead of stopping the camera, I'm gonna use some of my uh, experience to let me do this without being a problem. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a band that goes across with all these little divots. Maybe I'll make different bands as we go. That could be kind of the theme of this piece. You ever seen how a flower has a whole bunch of little seeds, you know, in the end, say like a sunflower. You don't see the shape of the seed, you just see the top of it kind of poking out. I like that. Makes cool, cool textures. Now, if we were able to dry and fire these pieces, we could do some cool things by inlaying glaze or underglaze into these textures. And that would be really cool. Uh, so there's one band. Um, some other things you might do. Um, you could create textures with the other end of a loop tool like this. And I'm going to try to lightly carefully trim maybe like a containing band there now I don't want you to just take things like a needle tool or a point of a pencil and draw lines into your clay because that that's really kind of shallow and boring and I think carving it actually works a whole lot better. So maybe try things like the end of a screwdriver. This is a little miniature screwdriver and we could try to press into that and you know gouge out a little groove. that that is a lot nicer than doing it just with like a pencil point or a needle point Now, I'm trying out a bunch of different textures. You could go over the whole thing with the same texture or just you know, make a design with different shapes in different places. Um, let's see what else I have here that we could work with. Um, I've got this little drill bit 
and actually it's a big drill bit. And what I can do is make some divots. Don't go too far, you go all the way. I just twist it a little bit with my hand. Makes cool divots. And since I had these thin lines on the other side of that, I'm going to do it again. Try to use the screwdriver to make some channels. They're more than just lines, they're like channels scribes into that surface. Like I said, if this would work a little bit better if this was just a little bit stiffer. Uh, and although this has been sitting out for a while, even after I hit it with the heat gun, it still is quite wet clay. This doesn't always work very well trying to carve into wet clay and it sticks to your tool and it's kind of annoying. So let's see if you can see some of those textures that I've carved into this seed pod, right? And of course this side is kind of boring. So the idea would be to continue on with not boring. Make it interesting. So I think uh, I found this little brush. It's a, it's a wire brush that goes inside the drill. It was out in the garage and had all these spiky wires sticking out of it. And I thought, well, what will that do to the surface? Certainly won't leave it smooth. To make one area kind of rough like that and if I contrast it with a smooth area that could be kind of cool so that there and so I'm gonna try this loop tool it has a little rounded end on it see what that looks like Two kind of blend together. this tool. I'm going to go a little faster now with it. It'll be a little random. You'll see how it starts to look more and more like some kind of nut or uh, like a walnut shell or something. Um, and a nut is kind of a seed, isn't it? Seed pot idea, there you go. Making a lot of scraps too, they'll make good slip later after they dry. So here's kind of an interesting little seed pod that goes in the garden that can stand up. It's kind of egg shaped if you want to flatten it down a little bit and do that. You don't have to keep an egg shape if you don't want it.
All right, what do you think of that? It's kind of fun. Shake those up so they don't get too stuck in there as they dry, they'll, they'll loosen up. All right. So, seed pod. There's a clay sculpture for the garden. Let's work with this guy a little bit. Uh, let me switch these here. You can look at that if you want. All right, so this one started to um, stiffen up a little bit. And what I want to do is, I want to go back. I like this tool, how it was working good for me. It's just a little loop tool here. And let's see how that works. Create some linear texture. I'm kind of just going for it. You might be a little bit more, or be a little less aggressive, I should say. A little more reserved, depending on how much clay you have. That's kind of neat that texture all the way around. We're not done with it yet though. Let's see. Um, some other things you could, you know, push textures in. I'm going to use that part. This is a Sharpie pen and the back of the Sharpie pen I'm going to use around here. Just kind of randomly putting some dots in here. Try to do it so you can see it. Sometimes when you can see it, I can. Talking to a camera. Go around that seam there. That kind of makes it look a little organic, you know? And I want to do something in here, which is kind of neat. So I've got a lot of texture over here, and this is really smooth. So I might like that contrast. I might keep that. But I might just make this a little divoted so it looks like that it is some kind of seed pod. And so I don't want to go, I could, you know, take this and put some dots in there. I want to go back to that drill, this drill here, and see how that looks by kind of make some shallow divots like that. How about that? I don't want to go all the way through. So I made this by making a pinch pot on the bottom, and then I made a pancake here, and then I gave the pancake a little bit of a dome to it. You just have to let it sit over something that's round, say like a ball, go out to a basketball and put your pancake on top of a basketball and it has a little bit of a curve to it, you know, it'll dome it. How's that looking so far? Kind of cool. Clear this one up. Um, these would look really good if they had some good uh, contrasting glazes or, you know, glazed and unglazed surfaces contrasting each other. That would look really nice. So we'll have to dry these out and eventually fire them. How's that looking? I've got a few more empty spaces I'd like to fill up. Just a couple more. Bear with me. So, 
Take a little time to look online, look at some seed pods, get some ideas from nature's, nature's design. And use some of the suggestions that you see, you know, the repetition, line, textures, to make something look like a, some kind of growth form. That would be kind of neat. And I could see this to be on some kind of a stick, sticking out in your garden, you know. If you had a set of these, maybe three, that would be really cool. Um, if you only had one, that'd be fine too. And then if you shake it, it's got a little rattle going on in there. So take some of your clay, see if you can make some uh, abstract seed pod growth form sculptures for the garden. Um, that's today's assignment. Give it a try and we'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to seeing the work you make and uh, seeing you turn in this Friday. Um, Got about three more weeks left, including this week, and uh, then we'll be done. And we can, uh, well, we'll take it from there, right? All right, so, good day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me shut it down.